Well, one could be Britain's next prime minister, the other the niece of a slain civil rights leader named Martin Luther King. Two very different people, one very common push. Why do and have so many Brits joined ISIS? Uh, we've seen increased radicalization within the United Kingdom. Um, much of this, I'm, I'm afraid to say, is a self-inflicted wound. We've had four decades of state-sponsored state multiculturalism. We've actually encouraged people not to come together and to be British, but to live separately, to live apart. Uh, we even had- Kind the of like what we're doing here. Uh, yes. No, there are similarities. We even had the last Archbishop of Canterbury suggesting that Sharia law would be acceptable in British cities. So I'm afraid we have been weak and we have not been muscular in standing up and saying to people, we are a Christian country. We have a Christian constitution, a Judeo-Christian culture. We've allowed our schools to be infiltrated. Our prisons, you know, are now perhaps where jihadism is on the march more rapidly than anywhere else. Much of this we've done to ourselves. To have the leader of our country at one point say, well, we're no longer a Christian nation. And I'm noticing now that in all the reports, when we're hearing from the White House, we're hearing various answers. But where is the righteous indignation? Where is the charitable oh, answer? What about the Geneva Convention? So we are all rules gone now. And then do we pontificate about, well, we've done some strikes and we're having conversations, and yet young men are being killed and beheaded before our very eyes, American young men. All right, it's fair to say that those two are not politically on the same page, but on this central issue about losing our, our core as a Judeo-Christian uh, nation, as a Judeo-Christian Western power, do they make a point? Is this move toward multiculturalism and away from Judeo-Christian values fueling the ISIS problems we're seeing? Let's ask Father Robert Sirico and Captain Chuck Nash. Father, what do you think? Yeah, I think when you create a vacuum, something's got to fill it, especially with young men who are seeking for idealism when they don't anymore have the idealism of the Judeo-Christian culture. They're going to seek for some other absolutes, and sometimes those absolutes, as we're seeing, are quite uh, destructive. Captain? Neil, when I was a young lad and I was in school, we were taught that America was the great melting pot. That when you came here, you became as one, you became an American. And then we shifted at some point, I believe it was in the 70s, to start calling it the salad bowl concept, where it was all of the various parts, each distinct, that made up the great salad. Well, the military continues to run the melting pot, i.e., find those things, the common values, the common language, the common accepted behavior that all shall do. And that's why the military is the last meritocracy in this country. So when you give up on that and you start accentuating differences, it doesn't bode well. Uh, Father, the argument for moving away from being a Christian-based nation, as to, 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 to quote the niece of Martin Luther King, is that you want to allow more in and a more open mind to these other points of view. Uh, she rejected that, so did uh, Ms. Farage, but what do you think of that? Well, I think that this notion of uh, Christian, Judeo-Christian culture as being intolerant is completely fallacious. If you want an inclusive culture, then you want that kind of culture that recognizes distinctions, but also the dignity of the human person, because uh, human dignity is predicated on humanity, not on culture. Culture changes from time to time. You know, if you and I went back to the respective villages of our ancestors in Italy, we would be in culture shock, because even the Italian culture as it transferred to the United States changed. It became an American Catholic culture, uh, American Italian culture. And so I think this is, um, we're, we're playing a very dangerous game here, this multiculturalism that's mandating things to be broken down on the basis of clay, class and race. And this promotes a balkanization of our nation. You know, is it more economic, though, Captain? One of the things I've raised with economists on this show is that, you know, in an economic vacuum where, where, where a lot of jobs are wanting and the jobs that are there aren't that great, this is what happens. And it has nothing to do with this whole uh, Judeo-Christian argument. What do you say? Well, I, I disagree because uh, as a society, society shares many, many things. 
And when you come in and look at uh, all of the past uh, migrations into the United States, whether it be the Germans, the Dutch, uh, the, the Spanish, uh, Brits, uh, it doesn't matter, most of them came from Christian countries. So when you look at that, and then you look at the transition of coming from that country to the United States, the one thing that you share with your new country is your core belief system. And you draw your strength and your, and your uh, willingness to endure from that belief system. So that's one thing that doesn't change. However, when you come from a country in the Middle East that is predominantly uh, a Muslim country, you have the total thing that you have to overcome, which is not only this new and foreign culture, but the belief system that is antithetical to how you were raised. You know, Father, could it be something more basic going on here? I think you and I have chatted about this in the past, but we know church attendance is down, religious worship at any established institution is down, and this is endemic across the board, no matter the religion uh, and no matter the country. And, and whether you want to say it's increasingly a godless world, uh, it, it seems to be increasingly more of a secular world. What's going on? Well, I, I think that's true. Uh, you, you remarked a moment ago about the um, economic framework in which we exist and uh, being responsible for it. But l let's remember that the economic framework of the United States heretofore, till the last perhaps 15, 20 years, was largely mm -hmm. a, 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 an ethic built on the Judeo-Christian values, the view of the human person, the right to property, the right to trade, a sense of tolerance even where there was disagreement. I, I know that from having grown up in Brooklyn in the 1950s, you, you couldn't have had more diversity that was not mandated by any state uh, apparatus, and yet there was a common core uh, that was just spoken about that, that joined us together. Uh, an ethos that bound us together in a common cause, a common culture. And I think that's what we need to, to re-promote. And, and, and the fact that the churches are failing in that is the result, I would insist, on a certain cowardice with regard to uh, our own ethical system. We've lost hmm. confidence in our civilization. And when that happens, the game's up. Well put, Father. Well put, Captain. Thank you both. Very, very much.